Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, and I'm out here in the heavenly backyard garden, and it is just that right now. We're in the month of May, and the galaxies are still prevalent up in the nighttime sky, as we're still looking out away from the galactic core. However, as the month wanes into the uh, end of the month into early June, uh, we're going to start being focused more toward the arms of the Milky Way as we start rotating into the core of the galaxies, and that's during the summer months, and that's where we see all that nebulosity that is just full of wonders of the universe. So there are a lot of targets to look at throughout the month of May, and all the targets that I'll be showing you are taken from my telescopes over there, uh, the Orion Eon 130mm refractor and the Celestron 11 inch Edge HD, and I have that set at f7 with a focal uh, length of around 2100 millimeters. You need a, a long focal length to get some of these galaxies and some of these planetary nebulae and also the uh, uh, globular clusters, which I'm going to be showing you these targets in the month of May to try and go ahead and look at in your own backyard. A lot of globular clusters up right now. I love looking at those things. They're just uh, amazing. Uh, hundreds of thousands of star in a spherical uh, area bounded by gravity. And they float up above and below our galactic core. And the nebulosity is beginning to show up early in the morning hours. I got a view of the pillars of creation that I just took just the other morning. So with that being said, Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Let's see what's up in the sky in the month of May, 2025. We start our tour of the May nighttime skies with the galaxies, and then I'll take a look at numerous globular clusters, then a few planetary nebulae, and then the famous pillars of creation. I end the tour with the planets. The galaxies. You still have many to choose from, including Markarian's chain of galaxy, which is always a fascinating view with nine telescopically bright galaxies aligned within its chain with many more dimmer ones in the same field of view. Many of these galaxies contain hundreds of billions of stars each, with some containing a trillion stars. The Northern Pinwheel Galaxy, Messier 101, near the constellation Ursa Major, is an easy target, and this mega galaxy itself contains about a trillion stars. But this is also a good time to view the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, Messier 83. This face on galaxy is at its highest point in the southern sky around midnight in the month of May. But with a declination of minus 29, this height is only about 30 degrees above my horizon at my latitude of 32 degrees north. Observers further north will have a challenge to view this galaxy. It is about 15 million light years away, which is relatively close for galaxies, and contains about 30 billion stars, as opposed to our galaxy, which contains, what, 200 to 250 billion stars. In Leo, the triplet of galaxies, known as the Leo triplet, is an easy target with small telescopes with speeds of f7 or less. You should be able to see all three of the galaxies in the same field of view. However, there are other galaxies in this region, including Messier 96, which is about 31 million light years away. This galaxy is quite similar to our own Milky Way galaxy in shape. You can easily view the Whirlpool Galaxy, Messier 51, near Ursa Major in the constellation Canes Vena TC. This beautiful site is about 23.5 million light years away and contains about 100 billion stars. Of its notable feature is the interaction of the dwarf galaxy NGC 5195. The combination of the two sometimes looks like a question mark. Some of the more interesting objects in the night skies in the month of May are the globular clusters, spherical clusters of one hundredths of thousands of stars bounded together by gravity in orbit above and below the plane of our galaxy. There are many to view this month, so let's take a tour of a few 
that I captured right here in the heavenly backyard and you can capture in your own backyard. Messier 3 is a globular cluster located in Cain's Venetici and is nearly overhead around midnight. It contains about 500,000 metal-rich stars and is an easy target to view in small to medium-sized telescopes. With an abundance of heavy metal stars, many burn in white to blue in color. It is about 32,600 light-years away. Messier 5, a cluster containing about 100,000 stars, is overhead at astronomical dark in the constellation Serpent. It is about 24.5 thousand light years away. It is one of the oldest clusters in the galaxies, not the oldest, but one of the oldest, at about 13 billion years in age. Messier 12 is a globular cluster about 16.4 thousand light years away in the constellation Ophiuchus. It is quite old with an age of about 13.8 billion years, a little bit older than Messier 5. This cluster can be faintly seen through binoculars. A small to medium sized telescope will begin to resolve the stars which number around 200,000. Very nearby also in Ophiuchus is the Globular cluster Messier 10. It contains about half the number of stars of Messier 12. It is about 14.3 thousand light years away. Messier 53 is a cluster about 58 thousand light years away in Coma Berenices. It is about 12.67 billion years old and contains about 500,000 stars. Most of the stars are composed of hydrogen and helium and burn with a yellow to white color. It is high overhead around midnight in the month of May. Let's turn our attention to the constellation of mighty Hercules. Hercules, the Roman equivalent of the Greek divine hero Heraclius, son of Jupiter and the mortal Alcmena. In classical mythology, Hercules is famous for his strength and for his numerous far-ranging adventures, which we won't really get into here because this is a family channel. In the sky, this constellation covers a large area, ranking fifth among the 88 constellations in size. Hercules' keystone asterism uses the quadrangle formed by Pi Hercules, Eta Hercules, Zeta Hercules, and Epsilon Hercules, known as the keystone asterism, as the lower half of Hercules' torso. There are four deep sky objects contained in Hercules well worth viewing in the month of May in the nighttime sky. Messier 13, the great Hercules globular cluster. It contains about 300 to 500,000 stars and it's about 26,000 light years from Earth. This globular cluster is easily seen through small telescopes and even good binoculars. It is rich in blues, yellows, gold, and white color stars. This is perhaps one of the best globular clusters in the northern sky. Nearby is another bright globular cluster, Messier 92. It is about 26,700 light years away and is about 14.2 billion years old. And most of its stars are metal poor, consisting of hydrogen and helium. Many of the stars glow in blue to white. NGC 6210. This is a planetary nebula, sometimes known as the Turtle Nebula. It is about 5,400 light years from Earth. Uh, this would be one of the more challenging targets to view. And I plan to put it on my list. I haven't viewed it yet, but I plan to put it on my list for this month using the large Celestron 11-inch Edge HD telescope. Let me know if you plan to look at this little nebula as well. Finally, but not least, is a planetary nebula cataloged as Abel 39, or PNA6639. It is about 3,800 light years away. It is nearly a perfectly shaped spheroid. It has been expanding for about the past 11,000 years. Most of the emission is from the oxygen atoms. I took this image using the narrowband filters with most of the shell exposed from the oxygen-3 filter, hence the blue color. The Hercules Cluster of Galaxies, also known as Abel 
2151. This is a cluster of about 200 galaxies way off in the distance of about 500 million light years away. This target will need to be viewed with a large telescope with several hours of total exposure and a lot of patience, but it might be worth the challenge. Messier 57, the Ring Nebula. This nebula is better viewed in the summer months, but it becomes visible around midnight in early May in the constellation Lyra, quite near the very bright star Vega, which is part of the summer triangle asterism. This planetary nebula is the result of a star in its final stages of life expelling its outer shell of gases. It is best observed using an ultra-high contrast filter or an oxygen-3 filter. Leaving Hercules and moving south-southeastward toward the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way is an area rich in nebulous targets, including Messier 16, the Eagle Nebula. For the month of May, this is an early bird target, rising in the southeast around 2 a.m. and becoming visible at my location around 2.45 a.m. Within the core of the eagle is an area known as the Pillars of Creation, made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope back in the middle 1990s. I took this picture in early May of this year using the Hubble palette of sulfur-2 for the red, hydrogen-alpha for the green, and oxygen-3 for the blue. And this is from the 11-inch edge telescope at F7 with a focal length of around 2100 millimeters. This target and many more will be the subject of next month and the month thereafter videos of what's up in the nighttime sky. Returning home, the planets are sparse in the western evening sky with Jupiter fading fast into the evening twilight. Jupiter will reach solar conjunction on June 24th. Until then, if you have a view of the southwestern sky, you'll definitely be able to see the gas giant, and with a small telescope or even binoculars, you should be able to see the four Galilean moons. Mars is about three hours behind Jupiter and sets around two o'clock in the morning at the beginning of the month of May and about one o'clock in the morning at the end of the month, and it is steadily fading in magnitude. If you are patient enough and have a medium to large telescope, you might still be able to see the polar ice caps. However, for the early birds, the morning planets are dominating the eastern sky with Venus shining extremely bright at a magnitude minus 4.5. That's down from its greatest brilliancy of minus 4.6 around Easter morning in the month of April. Leading Venus is the dim yellow Saturn, a little less than a billion miles away. If you are able to view this planet through a medium-sized telescope, the rings are now oriented nearly edge-on and very difficult to see. Mercury is shining brighter than Saturn by a full magnitude, but it is difficult to see because it is low in the morning twilight. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope some of these targets inspire you to go and open up your telescope and view these heavenly uh, objects in your own backyard with your own equipment. You don't need the Hubble Space Telescope or the James Webb Space Telescope uh, to see these objects. I mean, I mean, look at that Pillars of Creation I took right here in my own backyard with my equipment over here and it's not the you know the world's largest telescope by by all means and you can get similar results with your own equipment i'd like to thank all those who have been supporting my channel and i'm, I'm approaching 9,000 subscribers and my goal is eventually to get to 10,000 subscribers on this channel and you can help me do that by just hitting that subscribe button below i would like to thank all those who have been supporting my channel as well uh, and, and those who have joined my channel, uh, I appreciate that very much. And also those who have uh, uh, sent a super thanks and buy me a cup of coffee. I really appreciate that. And there you can see the list right there uh, of those who have been helping me with this channel. Anyway, the, you know, the, the skies in the month of May are just filled with all kinds of different targets. You have the galaxies, you have the globular clusters, you have the planetary nebulae. And then for the early birds, you get the uh, the, the nebulae over there in the arm of the Sagittarius region of the Milky Way. And again, the Pillars of Creation, the Swan Nebula, you have the uh, 
Eagle, well, the Eagle Nebula is part of the uh, Pillars of Creation, uh, the Omega Nebula, and then coming in, also into view would be the uh, Lagoon Nebula and the Trifid Nebula. Uh, all those are coming up. Well, that's, that's next month. That's in the month of June, basically, unless you're an early bird, and then you can pick those up uh, in the morning hours and get a preview of coming attractions. So remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders and they're all in a sky near you. And unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.